Good morning, Vivek. Hello, hello, Atul. How are you? Very well, very well. You started playing like Virendra Sehwag. Acha. <laughs> I actually went out and came back because the other laptop video was not. I saw you. I met you, and then I came out. Right, right. We saw you. We saw you. I think we've got some participants already there. Okay. So, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, actually, everyone. And uh, uh, we will start in two minutes. So uh, please bear with us. We have Vivek Atre already with us here and uh, Shikha Sood. So my name is Atul Khosla. Good afternoon, everyone. I'll just be back in a second uh, and we'll be, start, we'll be starting in two minutes time. Be very warm, Vivek. Yeah, it's very warm now. It's uh, 41 degrees max and uh, 41 and 33, something like that. Wow, even in Solon, it's uh, it's starting to get warm. Yeah, and so that's true in Mandi also, where our teachers are. Yes. So it's it's. I think next three days is going to be a heat wave and. Uh, after that, I'm here it's going to start. It's going to rain a bit, so there's going to be a retrieve around Wednesday, Thursday. So waiting for that, Vivek. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's really bad. But this is dry heat, so we are okay. When it becomes July or August, then it's going to be hot and humid. But that's every year, so uh, let's see. I hope the monsoon is good. We need that. Uh, Shikha, you might want to let us know when to start. We have a few teachers, uh, uh, but I think they might. Some of them might be joining a little later. It's three oh, thirty. Yeah, so we'll wait till three thirty-one. Right. I'll just talk uh, and I'll we, just get back to you. We can start. Okay. So you can please give us feedback. On that. Thank you, Shikha. So we have. Uh, Before we start, Vivek, uh, can you, me, and Shikha just catch up for five minutes after the webinar? I'll appreciate that. Yes, yeah, sure. We can do that. So I'll uh, quickly send you a Zoom link for that. Sure. And we'll get uh, Shikha's signal when to start. Yeah. So any latest on uh, Corona, Vivek? Um. I have heard uh, that uh, Mumbai is really, really, really out of control. So that's the worry. All cities otherwise are seem okay. 6,000 per day is not ideal at all. It's really a lot of people per day. But uh, the country of our size, that's not too bad. Yeah, overall, it's not too bad. We are now 10th in the world in terms of numbers. So let's hope we stay there at 10th. Uh, you know, and uh, the numbers don't go up. So I think Maharashtra is a worry. Otherwise, okay. Today the sad news is that Balbir Singh Senior passed away. Yes, uh, I have that. Okay, yeah. legend. Of course, you're a sportsman, uh, but also we had uh, Dr. M. S. Swaminathan also pass away two days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Swaminathan was a member of, as you all know, he's the father of uh, uh, the Green Revolution. And he's he was also uh, the founding member of our of our board at Shulani. So it's a bit of a sad day for us. I said two days ago. Okay. He expired two days ago. It's an amazing man. Uh, met him a couple of times. Uh, brought in a huge amount of energy into his work, and uh, what a visionary he was. Yeah. So I'm getting some input that uh, teachers are facing a bit of problem. What we'll do, Vivek, is we'll wait for. Uh, another 30 seconds or one minute at the outside and we'll start. Uh, we promise that we'll start on time. So if Shikha allows us, we're going to start in a minute's time. Sure. Okay, Shikha? Right.
So your favorite color is blue or uh, is yellow today? Mustard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'm going to change for the evening. Uh, we have another webinar. I know. So that should be nice. Uh, we have another one on Thursday for which we can invite these teachers also. That is for education. Uh, Fantastic. Yeah, that's we'll request Shikha to do that. I think it's time to start. If you allow me, Vivek, let's start and the others can catch up and they can also look at our recording session, which is going to be on YouTube. So if you allow me, I think we should start. That's good. Yeah. So good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, teachers. Welcome to Ideas That Matter, series of webinars by Shulin University in association with Vivek Atre. The idea behind Ideas at Work is very simple. It's about interacting with each other, inspiring each other, and ensuring that we can inspire our students in the process. The young minds of India are the future of the country. And if you can inspire these people, the country is in safe hands. And that's really the inspiration and the aspiration behind these series of webinars. This is our 33rd webinar, Vivek, and uh, delighted to again share the stage with you. Very quickly, just a quick introduction. My name is Atul Khosla. I'm the founder and pro vice chancellor of Shulini University in Kasoli Hills, Solan, Himachal Pradesh. Shulini, as you would know, is one of North India's leading private universities. But when it comes to research and innovation, we're actually one of the best in the country. In many, many parameters, we are even ahead of the mighty IITs. Quick introduction to me, I'm a BTEC from IIT Kanpur, very proud of IIT Kanpur, but IIT Kanpur is slipping in the ranks and hopefully Shulani can be head of IIT in multiple parameters going forward. I then did my MBA from General Lal Bajaj Bombay, 20 years in the industry across the world, seven different countries, 35 different states, several multinationals. McKinsey and Company was the first I started with, which is the world's leading consulting firm. And my last was the CEO of Oliver Wyman, which is the third largest and uh, uh, global consulting firm in the world. 13, uh, 2013, I moved back to teaching. I love teaching and that's my passion today. And that's why I'm at Shulani right now. So with me today is Vivek Atre. Vivek is, as all of you know, an ex-IS officer, a TEDx speaker, a motivational speaker. He is the one who inspires me every time I listen to him, a mentor, a friend. And more importantly, also an advisor to me and also a professor at Shulini University. Vivek, and he's going to blush when I say this, is also so-called uh, the mentor of the IT park of Chandigarh that all of you know. He was the director of IT and conceptualized the IT park. Now speaks all across the world uh, and uh, very active speaking in Spain and other parts of the world. And he's going to take us through uh, the fascinating journey of speaking like a pro. So I won't take much time. Vivek, I'm going to talk about some of my experiences during your talk, but it's your day today. So over to you, Vivek Atre. Thanks a lot, Atul. Professor Atul Kosla. Very nice of you. A lovely, warm introduction as always. And nice to see that quite a few teachers have joined now. And uh, I'm sure that they will benefit from this session. I'll try to do my best. And uh, thank you for the introduction again. Uh, it's a pleasure to be tying up with Shulini and being a part of Shulini University. I feel all the more uh, happy that we are uh, doing these seminars, organizing these seminars, reaching out to schools. I believe today all the teachers, uh, they are in Mandi or around Mandi. I have been to Mandi. A number of times and let me also tell you that my wife Nina was born in Mandi. So that is something for you to be happy about hopefully. Uh, she was, uh, her father was in the electricity board and they were posted there when she was born. Long ago now, uh, late 60s, that is 1968 I think. Uh, so this is uh, an era where uh, Mandi must have been different. But I have been there in the last couple of years, a uh, couple of times. And actually, I spoke uh, under the ages of Maruti uh, at Mandi. There was a motivational lecture for the public about two and a half or three years ago. And there I spoke on uh, motivation, inspiration, human qualities, leadership. And it was a public lecture attended by 300 or 400 people in Mandi. There is a big hall on top of the hill, I think near a mandir. And uh, it was a pleasure to be there. 
so let me start with the topic on public speaking. I, as Atul Khosla said, I am a public speaker. I speak all over India and Shulini is my regular halt where I go and speak to the students. I also have 2 million views on YouTube. That is 20 lakh views on YouTube. So you can watch my YouTube videos, searching me on YouTube. And you can also follow my channel there. Shulini University has a channel on uh, YouTube, which you should also follow. Very good webinars are taking place every day. And it is a real joy to be a part of them. So please watch these webinars and talks. So talking about public speaking, all teachers are in a way public speakers. They have to be in the speaking mode uh, when they go there. And when they uh, go there, then they have to be very much uh, in a speaker mode in the class. Online also nowadays you are taking online sessions. So it is very nice that you are able to do that. And uh, King George's uh, College, I'm sure, is able to make you uh, use the best of your speaking ability. But online and offline are two different things. When you are in a classroom, let's talk about that, in physically in a classroom with the students, that is a time when you have to really, really work hard to keep their attention and keep the flow of the lecture and keep your uh, talk or your subject teaching interesting. Uh, holding the attention of young kids is, uh, as you know, a very tough job and their attention spans are very limited. So the teacher has to be very sharp. And the teacher has not only to be sharp, also has to be firm, has to be in control of the class. So the first tip that I'll give you is that uh, one has to be well prepared, whether it is a classroom, it is an online class, like today is an online session, or you are speaking on the stage. Wherever you are speaking in public, you have to be very well prepared because unpreparedness will lead to exposure. People will find out that you are not prepared or you had to consult your notes repeatedly, that will not give a good impression. I am sure most of you know your subjects like the back of your hand. You are very clear on what you want to teach, what you have to go through, syllabus, etc. Still, <coughs> it is always a good idea to consult your notes, go through them, and uh, prepare your points before the lecture. So your uh, lecture in the class or on the stage, supposing there is an annual function, you are uh, to speak for five minutes or 10 minutes, 15 minutes as a principal, as a head teacher, or as a host of the program, maybe you have to speak. And maybe you have to address teachers at times, visitors, parents. Being prepared is the first plus point that you can have. So go through your content very, very well. The next point to be uh, is to be yourself, not to be trying to be someone else and not trying to be uh, someone who is supremely confident. If you are a little underconfident, then be yourself. Try and uh, uh, not to hide that fact that you are a little underconfident. It's okay to be a little nervous. If you're on stage, people are watching you. It's all right. Take deep breaths and go and speak to the best of your ability. And be prepared. Yeah, being prepared will really give you that uh, chance. But being yourself, I also mean that be yourself means that don't put on accent, don't put on an act, don't try to be, uh, let us say, Alia Bhatt, or let us say Ranveer Singh, or Virat Kohli. Let us not try to become somebody who is different from us. If we are from Mandi, then we are from Mandi. If we are from Himachal, we are from Himachal. We will have certain accent which is part of Himachal's accent. If we are from Haryana or Punjab, we will have that touch over there. So whatever touch you have in your speech, whatever accent you have, go with that. If you are good at English and your subject is to be taught in English, continue in English. If your school allows you to break into Hindi at times and you are comfortable breaking into Hindi, do that, whatever is permitted. So make sure that you are prepared and make sure that you are yourself. You are not trying to be someone else. Third, the third point is make sure you are calm. Calm, C-A-L-M, calm. And your mind is not disturbed when you go to speak. If you are thinking of the previous lecture or you are thinking of the next lecture and you are in the present lecture, you will not do justice to this present lecture. 
and if you're thinking of uh, what will happen if I go wrong, then also you will not do justice. So on stage, it is good to be calm. And being calm means that you have to be uh, telling yourself that whatever I have done to prepare, it is time now to go on stage. So there is no chance time to prepare anymore. So whatever I know, I will do to the best of my ability. Give yourself that chance by being calm in your mind. And one way to do it, as I said, is deep breathing before your lecture. Sometimes even during your lecture or your talk, like I'm speaking to you now, I'll be speaking for 15 minutes, then we'll have Atul coming in. I'll speak again for 15 minutes, then we'll have Q&A. So each time I speak, I have to prepare myself mentally to be calm. I can even do some deep breathing at that time, before the session or before the next one, or in the middle also at time. You can just do... It helps me as a public speaker, double breathing like this. This is a tip I'm giving you out of my meditation practice. When I meditate, I do this and we do this kind of technique before the meditation. And it helps us a lot. So be yourself, be prepared, be calm. And calmness also comes from, let us remember that calmness will lead to a lot of uh, improvement in your vision in your understanding. If your mind is disturbed and restless, you will not be able to understand what is being said and what is what is to be said. There is the example of a muddy uh, glass of water, which uh, Swami Smarnanandji gave that day in a guided meditation session that was online. And he said that uh, a muddy glass of water, uh, if you keep it on the table, the mud will settle down to the bottom. And the water will become clear after half an hour, maybe 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. After that, the water is looking to be clear, except the mud at the bottom, which is settled. So allow your mind to settle down before your public lecture or before any other important engagement. For that purpose, you really need to prepare well. If you are running to your session or your class or your speech, and two minutes to go, you reach there. Or you are late, two minutes late, five minutes late. And suddenly you have to go on stage and speak. Even in big meetings, I used to be in the IAS. And I resigned two and a half years ago to become a speaker. I used to go there. And if I was not prepared, uh, that I didn't have time to settle down in my chair, then I would be caught off guard. But if I was prepared, then I'm fine. So you have to be prepared. And you have to be prepared in the manner that you are absolutely calm before the session starts. So be prepared in that manner. And the next point is going to be that uh, practice your delivery. Practice your delivery. Which means when you are starting out as a teacher or a speaker, even later, practice before your friends, practice before your family, practice with small one or two, three people watching it. Deliver a speech of 20 minutes on the Indian education system, sports in India, or Himachal Pradesh and its future, or let's say the youth in India, what should be done to give them the right balanced kind of life. So all these topics, you know, you know the answer. Structure your speech, start with a beginning uh, kind of warm up or a beginning which is absolutely uh, going with your lecture. Have four or five points, and then at the end, a conclusion. This is how to become a prepared public speaker. I'm going to hand over to Atul now. Atul Khosla will take you through a video of Aman, a promising student from Shulini University. And Atul, I'll also request you to add your experiences and tips about public speaking. Thank you, Vivek. It's uh, like you rightly said, Public speaking is one of the most important skills which are needed in today's world. And mind you, you all need it uh, today. All of you are speaking in public, if you think about it, every day through your online lectures. There was a time when people, only your students would listen to your lectures. But today, your classes are being seen by the parents. Your classes are being seen possibly by the neighbors. And they're also being recorded and they are being put on YouTube. So you all need to step up and get into the domains of becoming great public speakers. 
I'll also like to share that, you know, even in things as a student, as a research, if you want to be successful, learning how to stand, learning how to keep yourself in poise are very, very important. I'm going to talk about a few tips after this video, but this video is an example of Aman. Aman was a very nervous girl. She comes from a small village of uh, Punjab and started working on a path-breaking project on water. And I'll show this video to you in a second. She's won multiple prizes now, multiple uh, recognitions now. The last was a 25 lakh award from Tata Trust. She's got the Young Water Fellow Award, which more than 100,000 researchers applied to. And she spent six months in Geneva, Vivek as part of that. So what made Aman special? I think her ability to learn to public speak her ability to present her case in a great way. It didn't come easy to her. I think she failed three times. She applied and would fail every time and would say, I cannot present in front of so many senior researchers and scientists. And then we made a practice. We wrote, we wrote a script for her. She practiced probably for hours and hours and hours. And she finally won. And that's the plain secret of public speaking. There's nothing but Practice, practice, practice. I'm going to show this video, uh, Vivek, if you allow me, and I'll then give a few tips about body language and uh, uh, you know how do you warm up before you give a public speech. If you allow me, let me play this uh, small video. This is the story of Aman. Aman, who was a meek, uh, not so great speaker. And with practice, not just became a great speaker, but also won and has won multiple, multiple laurels. And the work she has done, Vivek, is so pathbreaking that I wouldn't be surprised that one day, who knows, she might even win the Nobel Prize. Imagine she, through her research, will change the way people drink water. But changing the topic a little, I'd like to introduce three concepts for great public speaking, Vivek. The first is how do you give yourself energy before you start uh, a speech or you start uh, standing in front of an audience? And Vivek brought in the concept of breathing, deep breathing and a few exercises. There's another very interesting proposition, Vivek, which is what primates do, which animals do when they have to attack someone, they expand their body. There's a research that says that when you expand your body for two minutes, at any point of time, there are two things that happen. Your testosterone goes up and your cortisol comes down. Cortisol is the uh, hormone of stress. So stress levels come down. Your power, which is testosterone, goes up. So you become more confident, you become happier. 
So I was just going through a speech and uh, a talk by one of my very dear friends from Columbia University. And he explained this concept to me saying that, advise your students before any public speak to stand like this, open the legs and stand like this for two minutes. The research says that their performance improved by 70% by just this very simple exercise. And when you add Vivek's exercises, it could be double in terms of performance. The second thing I'd like to introduce is the concept of warming up. Everything needs warming up. When you start your exercises, you warm up. You know, you stretch and you warm up before doing yoga, Vivek. The same thing you need to do is to warm up your vocal cords. Three simple tips. How do you warm up your vocal cords? Do that five minutes before the speech. Warm up your lips. Warm up your tongue. Warm up your passage of your, uh, of your neck. Ah. And you'll see if you do that for two minutes before the speech, you'll be able to throw your voice much better. By the way, all theater artists do this and they practice it every, every day. Lata Mangeshkar practices 15 different exercises to loosen her vocal cords every day for 30 minutes. I'm sure Vivek does that too. The second thought, the third thought I'd like to bring in is a concept called hail. How do you engage people? How do you get them engaged into your speech, whether it's a student or it's a parent or anyone else? And the Hale framework says is that your speech needs to be honest. So whatever you see, you say needs to be honest because no one wants to hear dishonest people. The second thing is should be should be driven by facts and authenticated. If it's not authentic, you don't want to listen to it. I stands for it needs to be integrated in a sense that everything should be linked to each other. And L means that you shouldn't be lying as part of the as part of the speech. So if you can be honest, authentic, and engage your audience, you'll see that they'd love to hear from you and you'll get amazing, amazing responses. So more when I come back, over to you, Vivek. Thank you, Atul. That was lovely. Very nice, fresh ideas and very useful to me also. I shall use some of them. So beautiful. Uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, who are watching, uh, Atul Khosla has given you ideas of how to warm up, beautiful exercises. I was speaking about preparing for a public speech or a class or wherever you're going to speak. And I told you to be yourself, to be well prepared, to be calm, to have good content and then delivery. So we were on delivery. Now delivery, it, it means that you are basically, uh, firstly, you are confident over there. You may be nervous of somebody in the audience, it's okay. Your principal is there or your seniors are there or some troublesome students are there. You may be nervous, but you have to be confident in your own self. It doesn't matter what others are doing or thinking. If you are comfortable in your skin and you are okay with yourself, that's what really matters. Then became, becoming a good public speaker also involves uh, making sure that you are able to raise your voice when required and intonation is to be carried out. So when you're reading from a book, then your tone has to change or from a piece of paper, your tone has to change. Delivery means that you are not monotonous. Monotonous means monotone, which means single tone. You're not monotonous. I just read out from my book. This is my book, uh, Finding Success Within. It's for young people. It is 52 life skills for young people. This book is available uh, online and even the hard copies are available. So if I'm going to talk about a topic, there is a topic here, create goodwill, not just popularity. And if I say that, okay, goodwill is very important and therefore let us see what uh, this book says, then I read like this. There are some people who are always trying to gain popularity amongst their friends and colleagues. They make it an aim to rise upwards along the ladder of popularity. Others look down upon such tendency and dismiss as populist those who indulge in such conduct. Now, if I'm reading 
from the book, I cannot be speaking in the same way that I was speaking before reading. <coughs> you remember there was a Jalandhar television earlier, and I don't know whether you all remember. There was a very good news reader, his name was Raman Kumar, Punjabi news reader, long time. Maybe when we were in school, this is the probably the 80s, late 80s or something like that. You were probably much junior, all of you. So Raman Kumar used to be very good, but he would not change his tone. So he would speak in a monotonous way. So monotonous way means that your expression is limited. Your intonation is limited. People will lose interest if you are reading like that or speaking like that. The next one is pausing. The pause is very important. So if you're going on very rapid fire uh, way of speaking, going on and on and on, then people will lose interest also because they can't absorb it. So pause when you have to. That means that in mid sentence perhaps, like now I'm trying to pause. And then you start again and pause again. What happens then? In your content, you are able to make people absorb it a little better. By pausing, you're giving them time to reflect. You're giving yourself time to reflect and you're giving the voice also a bit of rest. Very important to pause. We can take the example of Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee. You know how great a speaker he was. And he used to pause for a long time. He was famous for that. And it would help him because after the pause, he would start again with energy and amazing speaker. Barack Obama, I often quote Barack Obama. Again, a great speaker. Barack Obama can look at the camera, look at the audience, smile, and he'll be so much in control of his uh, speech and whatever he's saying. He's so much at ease that he doesn't seem burdened, worried, or restless at all. His personality is like that. On stage, off stage, just cool and calm. So watch these great speakers. Watch great lectures. There is a great old lecture by General Manikshaw, Sam Manikshaw, on the internet. I was watching it on leadership the other day. Watch him speak. Just superb poise, control. Atul, Atul Khosla spoke about body language. So the next point is body language. Body language is basically how you stand, how you walk. Where are your hands? Are you moving your hands too much? Are you moving your hands just a little bit as much as required? Like, for example, I've been talking to people. I am a motivational speaker, as I said. So I have a video on how to handle this crisis, COVID, etc. So I say in one uh, little video, I said, rejuvenation and resilience are important. Then I say that, OK, will you come out of this crisis at the same level or at a lower level or at a higher level? So I use my hands in that manner to indicate the level. Use your hands as much as necessary. Body language has to be positive, confident, calm. It should not be shifty. People walk in the class or walk on the stage, it's fine. I also walk. I have to deliver a two hour lecture, maybe for half an hour, 45 minutes or one hour I'm walking. It gives me exercise also. It makes me contact people. It makes me look at people directly. And by walking, you're making it a little more interesting than just standing in one place. Then body language also means that you are not uh, slouching. You are sitting straight or standing straight. Nowadays online, many people don't keep the camera at the right. If you can see Akul Khosla's camera, my camera also hopefully, you can see me at a distance. Not totally in the face. If my face is right next to the camera, my personality looks different. And the students also, or the people who are watching, they won't look. So be a little away. Make sure your volume is high. And make sure that you are heard. Be this much away. Show this much of your body if you can. And then you are sitting comfortably. Maybe some painting, some book is there. So that also is very important. Which reminds me that I have here the autobiography of a yogi. And the autobiography of a yogi is my favorite book. It is about meditation, about the bigger picture. Paramansa Yogananda said it, wrote it. And Paramansa Yogananda ji also had major problems as a public speaker. Initially, initially when he was very young, he was going to America as a 27-year-old in 1920. 
which is 100 years ago today and on the boat on the ship to america and gentlemen came to know that yogananda ji is going to speak at the parliament of world religions or uh, conference of religious liberals rather and you know swami vivekananda ji had gone in the 1890s 1892 perhaps and here is paramansa yogananda born in 1893 going in 1920 and on the ship a gentleman comes to him and says i heard you are going to speak there why don't you deliver all of us a lecture all the inmates of this ship all the people on this ship why don't you deliver us a lecture and uh, yogananda ji then uh, delivers a lecture but he's very nervous and how he finds that divine help to actually be able to speak so beautifully and later he used to draw audiences of 5000 10000 at one hall in america for many many years till 1952 when he passed away he would hold many many lectures so confidence levels grew and we have to watch such videos listen to such speakers read about them winston churchill great orator just fantastic so be aware of who speaks well try and see what they do well see actors in movies also see their dialogue delivery amitabh bachchan anil kapoor whoever you feel anupam kher see how they deliver their dialogue and someone like rakhi or someone like kaliya bhat as i said deepika padukone see how they deliver their lectures or their dialogues those dialogues are delivered with that kind of confidence and poise watching such people will also give you a lot of uh, interest of course we don't need to be actors of course uh, atul khosla will tell you that now you we are all actors because we are speaking in front of the camera and in that sense you have to be very calm and collected and cheerful so the last one i'd give you is Uh, add a lot of humor add a lot of stories to your speech or your lecture or your talk or your class if you are not being interesting then people will be here and there their minds will be here they may be looking at you but they're not listening to you so add humor practice your stories know that in this i am going to talk about uh, let's say i'm going to talk about uh, the woodcutter in the jungle and i have to tell some story so therefore have this stories in your bank in your mind and before the class or before the speech prepare i am going to tell these two stories then it's going to be great for you you will really enjoy that i'll share a story with you and then we can pause and then i am going to request atul to come back this story is about uh this story is actually about a man who was hanging from a cliff and he was not very uh, much a believer in god he is hanging from a cliff somehow an accident he was walking there and he is now falling can't survive if nobody helps him he is hanging by great difficulty and uh, he doesn't know if anybody is there nobody is around so he shouts for help 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 is anybody there he says and then god appears and god says yes i am there so he says help me god he says okay my advice to you is jump now when he says jump the man is not uh, going to jump so he looks at god he says god is saying jump then he looks up again and he shouts is anybody else up there which means we don't have faith in god we don't have faith in what he says of course jump means a very drastic thing but maybe god has some plan for us we are dying anyway we are going to fall so god is saying jump you jump so that is the kind of thing that makes us learn to have faith in the divine and tomorrow with great difficulties we have reached this place in our life tomorrow also will be better than whatever crisis we are facing so this kind of story in any story you fit in wherever it is uh, suitable and then you will find that your talk lecture speech is more interesting anecdotes are flying and they are being discussed Ma'am, ne aaj ye padhaya, and she told us this story. You know, even a mathematician in a class can come up with some ideas, some anecdotes, some story from his own life or her own life. So always keep engaging the students, keep engaging your colleagues when you speak to them, and be confident, calm, and cheerful as a public speaker. Thank you very much uh, for listening, and it's over to uh, Atul Khosla to add his ideas, and then we'll take uh, questions hopefully at the end.
Thank you, Vivek. I wanted to leave two more thoughts with our dear teachers. First is the value and the necessity of practice. Yeah. And if you allow me, I'm going to give my story because I personally could not speak a word of English till I reached ID Kanpur. I grew up in Solon and uh, of course, no one spoke English in Solon in those days. So I learned how to speak. But more importantly, when I started to work, I could not speak very well. I would stammer to the extent that my CEO, and I was working in a great job in those days with a firm called McKinsey and Company. He calls me and says, Atul, we have to let you go, which means we have to fire you because you do not have the right communication skills that we seek and we desire. Of course, I had a bit of gumption and I requested for time from him. And I said, Mr. Puri, please give me some time. And he said, okay, I will give you two years, but I do not see you succeed in consulting for more than two years. So what did I do? I could have gone back and I could have gone back to my village or town and tried and uh, hid under my mom's anchel, but I didn't do that. I actually bought a video camera, which was a big thing in those days. And I would practice speaking in front of the camera every day for the next 20 years. For the first seven years, one hour every day. And once in a while, I do that even now. I learned how to speak. And I not just survived in consulting for seven years, but my last job was the CEO of a large consulting firm. So you all can do it. If I can do it, all of you can learn how to speak a bit. That's my first thought. The second thought was I was, I used to be very fidgety. I used to keep my hands like this. I used to talk like this. And most of you do that. That's actually not the way to keep your hands. Your hands are the most important tool for you and you cannot keep it like this because this means negative energy. So I was speaking to one of the, I was listening to one of the Swamiji's Vivek and he was talking and this is Swami uh, Smarnananda Ji, whom you also follow. And if you saw, he never talks like this. He always, his hands are always open. Always. Any thought he makes is with an open palm. He's radiating energy out. And that's what all of us have to learn to keep a hand stable and keep our body open and radiate the energy out, not take energy from the audience by being closed. So that's the first tip. The second tip I'd like to give is eye contact, looking into the audience. What I normally do Vivek is I identify six or seven people in the audience before I start. And from time to time, I look at each one of them. The audience thinks I'm looking at them in the audience and they have eye contact with me. The moment you have eye contact, you know the audience is with you. So hands and eye contact, two thoughts. Third thought is what to do with a podium. Actually using a podium is not a good thing. Great speakers never use the podium to the extent that Mr. Shiv Khera, a very famous orator and also uncle of Vivek does not even use a stage to speak. He actually stands in the middle of the crowd, the audience and speaks. So avoid using the podium. So next time when you give a lecture, next time when you're in public, avoid using the podium or do not use the podium, I would say. So what do you do with your feet? You can't be roaming around too much. Try practicing standing at one place just shuffling a little here and there during the 20 minutes or 15 minutes that you speak. Small tips, but go a long way for you. I ended up by just adding to what Vivek said, which is all of you have suddenly become actors. All of you are suddenly in front of the camera, getting recorded every day for your online lectures. You're also Corona warriors. You're also people who've made sure that students do not go into depression, are inspired every moment of the life. Hats off to all of you teachers. You are amazing. And that's exactly my passion. My passion and Shulini's passion is to take every young Indian and make him or her extraordinary, a world beater. So I'm going to show a video over here which shows the passion that we have in terms of what we're trying to do. And I'm sure all of you will resonate towards it because I know that is your passion also. So Vivek, if you allow me, I'm going to put this video on for a minute and we will then go from there.
throughout history. The young have always been the ones. To shape the future. Country's biggest asset. Our best bet to conquer the future. So what are you waiting for? Your time to dream is now. Dream of the research that can change the world. Dream of a high-flying corporate career. Dream of higher studies in the world's best universities. Dream of developing cutting-edge technology of the future. Dream of your own global startup. University. We empower you and enable you to chase your dreams and change the world. Shuri University. Think learning. Think success. Vivek, I'm going to end with a very small request to all our teachers. And the request is, I work with a lot of students from Himachal and from outside Himachal. The big difference between Himachal students, especially the ones who come from smaller towns, whether it's Mandi or Solon or others, is their ability to communicate, their ability to stand up and present. So not only have you teachers to become great presenters, so I'll also request you to encourage your students to become great presenters. And the moment they do, the day they do, they will become even more successful than students who come from Delhi, Bombay, or any other parts of the world. It's all about how you speak and how you can stand up and give a great, great public presentation. Those were my last thoughts, Vivek. Over to you. Thank you very much, Atul. I totally agree. I was in Chandigarh administration for a long time. And even in Chandigarh, what to talk of Himachal, they were boys and girls who were very good technically, but could not really speak well, could not really present well or communicate well. So very important for them to do so. And we started a soft skills training program. So teachers, as Atul says, that you have to not only uh, improve yourselves, but to even ensure that your students are good at speaking confidently and whatever language, language is not the barrier, it is the calmness and confidence that they need. Public speaking is also a skill that can be acquired and you can improve and they can improve. Atul gave the example of speaking before a camera for seven years regularly, which is amazing practice and uh, you're bound to improve if you practice that. So all the best to you all and keep in touch and I think uh, Atul, over to you. Yeah, we have a couple of questions. Uh, we have Umesh sir asking, and we'll uh, really request any questions that you have. We'll be delighted to answer them, teachers. So Umesh sir is asking, what is the most important factor we wait for you to become a good people public speaker? Yeah, firstly, uh, you have to practice on your delivery. So delivery means that uh, you know the content, but you have not practiced it. So the most important factor is practice of delivery. That means you stand before a small audience, two, three people, one person, and speak or speak before a camera and record yourself, watch. After one month, you should have improved with that practice. So I think to become a good speaker, all you need is practicing your delivery. And of course, content I mentioned earlier, you have to be prepared with your content. And then only you'll be able to practice uh, good delivery and good content. Both are important. So what has been the best speech for you, uh, uh, Vivek, you know, your best moments? 
So my best speech, I think, has been at my book launches, and I've had three of them. I think I've, uh, I think it also comes from involving your heart into something. So whenever we speak from the heart, there's a saying that whatever you say from the heart goes into the heart. So I think it was well received. It is uh, well loved. Whatever you say with passion. So be involved in what you're saying. I I feel that and my best speeches were at that time. And your nightmare. My nightmare is to go to a stage and start speaking and somebody tells me, sir, this topic is not your topic. <laughs> Has it ever happened, Vivek? <laughs> not really, but there was a topic which I was not familiar with. And it was more about, uh, I think it was about IPRs. Mm -hmm. And it was about uh, patents. And at that time, I was not familiar at all. Now I can at least speak for half an hour on it. But at that time, I started speaking and I realized I don't have much content. So after 5-10 minutes, I came to industry and economy and this, that and came back to IPR. So I was thinking like... My biggest nightmare is, you know, I have to give a speech and I have really prepared. So I've written some notes and uh, just before the speech, I lose the notes. <laughs> That's my nightmare. Sometimes I get these, you know, dreams. It's, uh, you know, we all have nightmares, right? Can happen. <laughs> Any last thoughts? I think we don't have other questions. Any last thoughts, Vivek, before we close? Yo, yeah, just, so, well, okay. just got one minute to close. Sure. Then my book, I must show it again. Please uh, read this book, Finding Success Within, and please show it to your students. Keep in touch with Chulini University and me and Atul Khosla. Let us not have this as a one-off uh, interaction. Please uh, always be in touch on LinkedIn or whatever you like. All the best to you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. It's been an honor and a delight to speak to you. Uh, what a lovely audience. And uh, we wish we were there in present rather than uh, in person, rather than, you know, over, over online. But lovely talking to all of you. And uh, once coronavirus is gone, we'd love to invite all of you over to campus at Shulini. Uh, the good news is we're all online. Uh, classes are happening full, uh, full flush at Shulini. We'll be doing our exams online, Vivek, and uh, we're starting this semester, whether students come on campus or online, right uh, 1st of August. Uh, and uh, that's, I think, really the Corona Warriors making all of this happen, you teachers. So once again, thank you all of you, and uh, let's, let's meet soon, either at your school or at Shulini. Have a great day. Thank you. All the best.